Good day to you all. I speak to you today from Rochford Hall, my home and where William and I are at our happiest, enjoying living a simple life. But that was not always the case. In my youth, Mary Boleyn's name was quite the buzz at Henry VIII's court. Perhaps you would like to hear of my life? You will perhaps know me better as the other Boleyn girl, a moniker I am destined to possess for all time. Yet was it not I, and not my sister Anne, whom the king loved first? Was it not I who gave him a son and daughter? Though this whole subject is a hotly debated one, so, dear viewer, I will leave it for you to decide for yourselves. The question of whom was the eldest of us three is another that goes unanswered. The births of even minor nobility were not always properly recorded, but I was perhaps born around 1500. Likely born at Blickling Hall, our family home, and raised with my siblings Anne, of whom you will know much about, <laughs> and George. We are of noble blood. My mother, the Lady Elizabeth Howard, has a trickle of blue blood running through her veins. Her great family, the Dukes of Norfolk, managed to survive the fall of their then patron. King Richard III. She had been lady-in-waiting to Elizabeth of York and then Catherine of Aragon. Known for her beauty, she made for a very good catch. Something my father, Sir Thomas Boleyn, a young and ambitious courtier, was quick to notice. We moved to Hever Castle, where our French governess taught Anne and I the rudiments of arithmetic, grammar, reading and writing, these subjects, it was felt, being of little importance to a lady. Instead, the emphasis was on dancing, music and singing, needlework and embroidery, etiquette, household management and games such as cards and chess. However, I was fortunate in that I was also taught archery, falconry, riding and hunting. When I was 14, my father secured me a position at the court of the king's sister, the Lady Mary, and I was accompanied her to Paris for her wedding to Louis the Twelfth of France. My mistress's marriage, however, did not last long. Widowed within weeks, I was one of the few maids of honour not to accompany her back to England. Instead, I remained at the court of Francis I, successor to the French throne, and his queen, Claude. My father and sister Anne joined me, she having studied in France herself during the past year. It is while here that a great disservice is paid to me by history, and my reputation left sullied, that I was una grandissima ribalda, infame sopra tutte. I will leave you to translate, as it is offensive to mine ears and that King Francis had referred to me as the English mayor. <laughs> I can state for the record that is not so, that my mistress, the very pious and strict Queen Claude, his wife, would stand aside and allow such behaviour to go unchecked. <sighs> it would be of great mirth to me, were it not so insidious. As it is, try as I might, I am sure I cannot change five hundred years of such a strongly held belief. In 1519, I returned to England, where I was appointed Maid of Honour to Queen Catherine of Aragon. The following year, what joy! I was wed. A good match to a wealthy and influential courtier, William Carey, William being third cousin to the King, via his grandmother Margaret Beaufort. His grace even attended the ceremony. My father saw this as a sign as the rise of the House of Boleyn. Yes, the name Boleyn was to become synonymous with power and greatness, yet it was not to last. 